Uh, welcome back to this course on combinatorics. Uh, in the last week's lecture, uh, we took a very short uh, survey of uh, the notions related to partially ordered sets. And uh, uh, we hope to use it uh, uh, this week. So what we are going to uh, do today is to uh, look at a technique called Mobius inversion. So uh, this gives uh, us inversion formulas uh, that can be uh, used uh, as we did in the case of uh, inclusion, exclusion, uh, other uh, topics. So uh, to uh, recall, uh, we said that a, a, a partially ordered set is locally finite if uh, all its intervals are uh, finite. Now, uh, let us look at uh, the set of all uh, intervals of a uh, poset x uh, and denote it by int of x. Now, consider the set of all functions uh, from uh, int of x to some field, let's say k. Uh, so, this set is denoted by i of x, comma k. And, uh, Together with the uh, in algebra that comes from the field, uh, the K-algebra, uh, this is called the incidence algebra uh, of uh, the partially ordered set X over uh, the field K. Now, uh, you know, we don't really uh, need these details, but just to uh, make it complete, I will just mention it. Uh, so that uh, this uh, I of XK uh, is a vector space uh, over K. Uh, where the convolution uh, is defined by, or the product uh, is defined by the uh, formula fg of x comma y is equal to summation over all uh, z uh, that is between x and y, f of xz, uh, g of uh, zy. Now, uh, this summation is well defined because uh, we assume that uh, x is locally finite, which means that you know, the set of all uh, such z is going to be finite. So the sum is finite. So therefore, uh, you know, this product is well defined. Now, uh, equivalently, we can also, uh, you know, instead of looking at this uh, uh, incidence algebra, we can just look at the set of all functions f of x uh, for our purpose. Uh, and uh, the set of all functions f of x, uh, which takes uh, uh, x cross x to r, such that f of x comma y, uh, no, f g of x comma y, right? again, uh, uh, for two functions, uh, f and g, the convolution is defined by uh, summation of, uh, you know, x less than or equal to z less than or equal to y, uh, f of x z into g of z y, as that uh, so whenever x is less than or equal to y and zero otherwise so we are just adding uh, zero here uh, you know uh, for the other uh, functions where uh, this uh, you know, uh, interval is not so therefore they are not comparable we don't have the interval so for the all those uh, elements uh, we are defining it to be to be uh, zero so uh, yeah, so uh, these two are uh, essentially the same. Now, uh, if you if you look at this, uh, you can show that uh, you know the convolution, the way we have defined convolution, uh, it is associative. So uh, I want you to do this as a, a homework. Uh, so prove that uh, you know f dot uh, g dot h uh, or f dot uh, within bracket g dot h is equal to f dot g uh, dot h. Uh, that uh, you know uh, uh, proves the associativity for uh, f and f g and h uh, in our uh, f of x or uh, in uh, into of x. Now uh, again, uh, you know, without mentioning it, I just assumed uh, the field uh, here to be R. Uh, we can assume it to be uh, C also, or in fact any field. Uh, but uh, you know, for our purposes, it will be uh, sufficient to assume it is uh, either R or C. Now, I define another function uh, 
delta uh, that says that delta of x comma y is equal to one if x is equal to y, and uh, it is equal to zero if x is not equal to y. Okay? This is also uh, defined uh, over the faucet. Uh, and this uh, function delta acts as an identity for the convolution. So that is a claim. So again, you can prove that by using the definition of convolution, uh, f dot delta is equal to uh, delta dot f is equal to f itself. So therefore, uh, it proves that uh, delta uh, function is the identity function. Okay. Now, uh, here is a, a proposition. Take uh, any function uh, in f of x. So then uh, the proposition says that uh, the following statements are all equivalent. So first is that f has a left inverse. Uh, second statement says that f has a right inverse. Uh, third statement says that f has a two-sided inverse. And finally, uh, we say that uh, f of x comma x uh, is uh, non-zero for every x in the poset x. So uh, all these statements are equivalent. So that is the uh, proposition. So how do you prove this? Well, uh, let us look at the first uh, or uh, you know one of the cases. Let's say f has a right inverse uh, called G. Now, if f has a right inverse G, then uh, that means that the convolution product uh, fg is uh, delta right by by the uh, definition of uh, right inverse and this is true if and only if so when is fg is equal to delta which means that fg of uh, x comma x is equal to delta of x comma x which is uh, 1 by the definition delta of x comma x is equal to 1 so therefore uh, f of x x uh, into g of x x is equal to uh, 1 for every uh, x in x and then uh, g of x comma y is equal to uh, negative uh, summation uh, x less than z less than or equal to y f of x z into g of uh, z y divided by f of x comma x for every uh, x strictly less than y in x now why is this true so we are saying that f g is equal to delta if and only if this is the case or g is a right inverse if and only if this is the case. Now, why is this? Uh, well, just uh, look at the, the definition of the convolution product. So, if you look at the uh, convolution product, we have uh, fg is defined to be summation. Uh, what is that? fg is summation overall uh, x uh, less than or equal to uh, z less than or equal to y, right? fg of x comma y. Uh, G of I mean f of uh, x comma x uh, times uh, g of uh, uh, no uh, f of x comma z f x comma z times uh, g of z comma y right now this is uh, f of uh, f g of x comma y so by definition of the convolution product so if you have f g of x comma y uh, you know, fg is delta, right? That is the assumption. Uh, fg is delta. Now, if fg is delta, then fg of x comma y is equal to delta of x comma y. But delta uh, of x comma y uh, is equal to equal to zero if x is uh, different from y. And therefore, uh, if x is different from y, this is equal to zero, right? Equal to zero, x uh, not equal to y, right? So, in this summation, right, the first term is f of x comma x, right, when z is equal to x, uh, then g of uh, x comma y, right. So, you take that sum, that uh, keep that uh, uh, m uh, on the left side and move everything to the right. So, what is the remaining thing? That is summation uh, x uh, less than uh, z less than or equal to y, f of x z into g of z y. So this is what see, this is what uh, you will have uh, on the right side right with the minus sign now 
So uh, on the left side, we had f of x x uh, into g of x y, right? So you take that uh, to the right side, you will get g of x y uh, to be this way. So therefore, if, uh, you know, uh, g is an inverse of f, right? Then uh, g should be uh, defined. So if it should be defined, then f of x x uh, cannot be uh, 0. I mean, f of x is not zero uh, because f of x x into g of x x is equal to one, right? Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, we can do this division, and therefore, we get g of x y this way. So therefore, if there is if there is a uh, a right inverse, then we already know that uh, uh, f of x x is uh, different from zero, and uh, g of x y is in this form. Okay, so similarly, uh, you can show the other uh, uh, properties, right? Uh, if uh, if was a left inverse, then also you know similar uh, idea works. And then using uh, the associativity property, we can also show that it has a two-sided inverse. Right? So all these are identical to the uh, assumption that f of x is different from zero, because in that case we can of course define uh, g this way. And uh, so I want uh, you to do all this uh, computation as a, uh, as a, as a homework, uh, not computation, uh, uh, formally writing this as a homework. Uh, so complete the proof uh, by showing the existence of, uh, you know, left inverse uh, and then uh, using the associative law so that uh, these uh, inverses uh, coincide, left inverse and right inverse coincide. Now, uh, we define one more function. So we already defined the uh, delta function. So we are going to define another function, zeta function. So uh, the zeta function of a poset uh, is defined as follows. Uh, zeta of x comma y is equal to 1 whenever uh, x is less than or equal to y. Zeta of xy is equal to 1 whenever x is less than or equal to y and it is 0 otherwise. Now, uh, this uh, zeta function uh, contains a lot of information about the poset. Uh, we will uh, maybe use it uh, sometime. But uh, at the moment, uh, I want you to uh, you know, uh, look at uh, this and then try to observe some properties about it. And here are a couple of properties that you can try to prove. Uh, the first is to show that if you, if you have the zeta function, then uh, zeta square of uh, x comma y uh, is uh, basically the cardinality of uh, the interval uh, x, so the closed interval x y. So uh, this uh, should be uh, quite easy to prove. Then uh, you can also uh, prove that uh, zeta minus one whole ratio t of x comma y uh, counts the number of chains of length t from x to y. So I <laughs> look at these two uh, function uh, zeta square and zeta minus one and then uh, look at the properties and then show that these properties are in the case. So this is a homework. Now uh, one observation is that uh, the zeta function uh, must have an inverse right because by uh, uh, the earlier property uh, where we proved that if the function f uh, of xx is uh, different from zero, right? Then uh, it is uh, uh, invertible. So here we have defined a zeta of xx uh, is because x is comparable to itself, right? Uh, zeta of xx is uh, uh, equal to one, so therefore it is different from zero, uh, and therefore uh, the function has an inverse. Now uh, we define uh, the inverse of zeta function. And uh, and call it uh, to be uh, mu. Okay. So by uh, the definition of inverse, uh, zeta mu of x comma y is equal to mu zeta of x comma y, uh, which is equal to delta of x comma. Y. So delta is the identity.
Now we call uh, mu uh, the Mobius function. Okay? So the inverse of theta function uh, is called Mobius function, and uh, we can see that mu of x comma y is actually uh, equal to uh, one uh, if x is equal to y, and uh, it's equal to minus summation uh, x less than or equal to z uh, strictly less than y mu of uh, x comma z if uh, x is uh, less than y. Now why is this? So if you if you look at the definition of uh, you know uh, the inverse here, right? So inverse was looking something like this, right? d of x y is equal to uh, minus uh, summation uh, f of x z uh, g of z y by f of x x. Right? Now similarly. Uh, you know, using uh, using that uh, definition, we can try to see why this should be the case for uh, uh, the mu, right? The Mobius function. So, how do you how do you prove this? So, to prove this, well, we can just look at the definition of the uh, you know the convolution product, right? And uh, the fact that uh, mu is the inverse of uh, zeta, right? So, what is uh, mu zeta of uh, uh, x y is delta of x y right so let us look at what is mu zeta of x y right so mu zeta of x y is summation overall by the definition x less than or equal to z less than or equal to y mu of uh, x comma z into uh, zeta right zeta of uh, uh, z comma y Right, uh, which is equal to which is equal to uh, delta of x y, right? No, oh, and and this is uh, when our x y is less than or equal to y. No, uh, zeta function so has a nice property. Right, zeta function is equal to uh, one when x is less than or equal to y and uh, zero otherwise. Right. So in this interval, what we know is that uh, zeta function is one whenever it is uh, you know looking at uh, the value z because z is between and y. It's in the interval. So therefore, uh, uh, therefore we know that this summation can be written as by us because zeta is uh, one whenever uh, you know we are counting and otherwise it is zero so therefore this is actually equal to summation uh, x less than or equal to y uh, x less than or equal to z less than or equal to y right mu of uh, x comma z that is equal to delta of x comma y this is true now if x is equal to y then Then uh, what we get is that, like you know, there is only one term, so mu of x comma x is equal to one. Now, otherwise, uh, because it is delta of x comma x, right? Otherwise, delta of x y is equal to zero. Otherwise, delta is equal to zero. Now, if delta is equal to zero, we can we can move one of the terms to the left side, right? For example, mu of x y x y we move to the left, so therefore we will get this uh, this uh, identity because we just took the last term right mu of x y from here and therefore that is because the summation is zero we get uh, mu of x comma y is equal to minus summation so that is the uh, proof that uh, uh, this is indeed the uh, inverse of uh, zeta of x y so we have the mobius function which is the inverse of uh, zeta So let us look at some example and try to compute, uh, uh, you know, uh, one or two uh, cases of the Mobius function. So how to compute Mobius function? So let us look at the simplest example possible. Like consider the chain. Let us say, uh, you know, the set of integers one to n, uh, ordered by the usual uh, less than or equal to order, right? usual order over the natural numbers. So uh, this. Uh, you know, this is our uh, faucet represented. The chain is represented like this. Now, what is uh, you know this? We already know already, but we can just uh, write it. 
So theta of uh, x comma y is equal to 1 if x is around equal to y and 0 otherwise. And delta of x y is equal to 1 if x is equal to y and otherwise uh, 0. Now, by a definition of the convolution, right, uh, and, and the definition that uh, zeta and mu are inverses of each other, zeta mu of x comma y is equal to delta of x y. Now, mu of x comma x is equal to 1, right? We already, we already established that it is actually 1, right? And uh, mu of x y has this formula, summation minus x less than or equal to z less than y mu of x comma z. So, let us uh, try to use this uh, and try to compute uh, mu in this case. So, what is uh, mu of x comma x? That is 1, we already know, right? So let us look at what is the next, right? Mu of x comma x plus 1, the next element. Now, this by the summation here, it is minus summation mu of x comma x plus 1. I uh, know mu of x comma, uh, yeah, uh, x because, you know, the last uh, term is x plus 1, which is a strict inequality. Therefore, we don't consider that. So, right, because we have already taken it to the left side. So, therefore, mu of x comma x plus 1 is equal to minus of this which is minus 1. Now, what is mu of x comma x plus 2? Well, that is minus of, you know, first is uh, mu of x comma x, which is 1. Then the second term is this, which is minus 1. And then uh, that's it. So, this is minus uh, of 1 minus 1, which is 0. And if you, if you continue this, you can see that, you know, this, because this sum is 0, you know, this, uh, terms and uh, you will get all the subsequent entries to be also uh, zero. So therefore, we can uh, see that mu of uh, i comma j uh, is uh, one if i is equal to j, is equal to minus one if i is uh, equal to j minus one or i plus one is equal to j, and uh, zero otherwise. Okay, so we computed the Mobius function of uh, the chain. One more example. Let us look at the poset B n, which is the uh, poset of all the uh, all the subsets of an n element set uh, ordered by the inclusion. So uh, consider uh, you know a subset of uh, B subset of X n, right? So two sets A and B. Just that A is subset of B, okay, this is also important. Uh, now, our claim is that mu of A B is equal to minus 1 uh, power cardinality of B minus cardinality of A. Okay. So, we want, to, we want to find out mu, but we just start with this claim. Now, how can I start with a claim before finding it out? Well, one way to do this is to, you know, start from, you know, the smallest and then try to work out a couple of examples, right, very small examples and then uh, try to see a pattern and then you can conjecture it. So, that is that is something you should try maybe, you know, take this without looking at, uh, you know, this expression that is given. Try to uh, come up with this prediction by looking at some example. So one can do that and uh, suppose we have done that and we have the prediction. So now how do you prove this, right? Mu of AB is equal to minus 1 raised to cardinal TB minus cardinal TB. Now, we can use induction here. So for the base case, we have mu of A comma A is equal to 1, right, by definition. But that is equal to minus 1 raised to uh, 0, right? Cardinal TFA minus cardinal TFA is 0. So therefore, the base case satisfies the induction here. Now, suppose uh, B is different from A, right? If B is different from A, then uh, we have some elements in uh, B minus A, right? Because B is, uh, you know, containing A, right? So, look at cardinality of B minus A and uh, call that to be a uh, small p. Now, because of, again, the containment, we know that this uh, is also equal to cardinality of B minus cardinality of A. 
now uh, let us apply uh, the induction hypothesis so mu of a comma b is equal to by the you know by the previous uh, definition that we have right it is minus uh, summation over all uh, over all uh, y i think it should be y such that uh, a less than or equal to y less than uh, i mean a containing y uh, containing b where this is a strict containment uh, mu of a comma y okay so I should make it more clean why now so uh, now what is this well here uh, because uh, you know the size uh, has become smaller we can use the induction uh, hypothesis so therefore this is equal to minus summation uh, a uh, uh, containing uh, subset equal to y uh, strict subset uh, b minus 1 raised to cardinality of y minus a right because uh, y is already uh, you know uh, strictly small so now what is this so this is equal to now if, if you look at you know we are looking at the subsets right uh, y and uh, you know you can instead of counting over this y we can also count over the with respect to the uh, cardinality right so what is the cardinality of y well if you if you look at uh, you know the cardinality of y to be let's say k then uh, there is exactly p choose k where p is the uh, you know the largest uh, cardinality here right uh, p choose k p choose k elements y right with cardinality k i mean p, uh, p choose k sets y with cardinality k and therefore uh, the contribution will be minus 1 raised to uh, uh, so okay sorry uh, so what i what i what i wanted to say was that k is uh, basically the cardinality of y minus a so yeah so y minus a ranging from 0 to p minus 1 you see that there is precisely p choose k of them and uh, so therefore minus 1 raised to cardinality of y minus a is k uh, p choose k uh, where uh, k is ranging from 0 to p minus 1, k ranging from uh, 0 to uh, p minus 1, uh, will be precisely this sum. And what is that? Now, this sum, you can, uh, you can verify that, you know, this sum is precisely, uh, you know, the binomial expansion of 1 minus 1 whole raised to uh, p, except the last step. Right, with a minus sign. Therefore, this is precisely minus 1 raised to p, p choose p, and that is minus 1 raised to cardinality of b minus a because p is the cardinality of b minus a. So, that is it. So, uh, we, we have uh, uh, showed that by induction, uh, this uh, uh, holds. Okay, so, mu of a comma b is equal to minus 1 raised to cardinality b minus cardinality of a for the uh, Bernoulli for set, yeah.